Hello and how is it going? Today I'm going to show you how to compile a sprite, the animated sprite editor and pixel art tool on Linux. This tool used to be open source for a lot of years and then I want to say, I don't know how many years ago, it got closed source or it didn't get closed sourced. It's still open source, but the binary releases, the handy dandy exe files in Windows that you can double click on, uh, that part is paid. It's $20, $19.99 US dollars currently for it. But I'm not going to do the Windows way of compiling it, nor the Mac OS way. All I'm going to cover is the Linux way, specifically on Debian and Arch. Um, it should be pretty easily adaptable to just about any Linux distribution. It would just be the top little part where we install the packages. You might have to do like some searching with your package manager and fudge a digit number or whatever to find the exact name of the package on there. But the only ones I care about, like I said, are Debian and uh, Arch Linux. So I will now proceed. This is a sprite. So the deal is, is you can still compile it from source yourself and you end up with effectively the full editor um, for free without having to pay the money. But the catch or whatever you want to call it, the clause, is that you don't, uh, you're not allowed to distribute that compiled binary form that you create. So as far as I can tell, I've gone through as much information about it as I can and there doesn't seem to be any stipulation against custom compiling it yourself and using it for any purpose you want. I guess they figure they should make plenty of money back with the $20 version. Um, I do encourage supporting them if you can afford it. It's a, a badass program and, uh, you know, they put a lot of hard work into it and all that. So I'm not just trying to show a way to like scam or get around that necessarily, but I know there's a lot of people that probably can't really afford it, but would like to start using it. So this is a way to go about that. And of course, I'm only going to cover the free open source operating systems as well, because if you're not in that world anyway, you're already in the commercial world. So enjoy it or go find somebody else's presentation of, to cover Mac or Windows. All right, heading forward with Linux. So this is a gist. I'm going to paste this link below the video on YouTube. So you can find it. I might have done a couple updates by the time you get to it, but for the most part, it should still be virtually identical to what you're seeing here. So the one I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate on is Debian. I've tested it a couple times on in a couple different ways on both systems, Arch and Debian. But I figure most people, especially people who might be watching this kind of a tutorial, would probably be watch, uh, using Debian because if you're smooth enough to be using Arch, you probably don't really need this tutorial, but if you do, that's cool too. Anyway, um, some of the instructions are a little dated on the website, so I just kind of redid it with the most concise stuff necessary. And you should be able to just copy and paste. So I'm going to triple click this line, copy it, and in my VirtualBox machine, I have input devices, uh, shared clipboard bidirectional. And you have to install the guest editions and all that stuff. Otherwise, you're going to have to split your screen and type it all in manually or whatever. But I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm going to open a terminal just in case you don't have a shortcut on your desktop like me. It's in System Tools, LX Terminal. And then I'm going to maximize that. And so what's going on here first is this Debian prerequisites. Of course, if you're on Arch, you'd want to follow that instead. Just these two paragraphs are the only thing that are different. Um, and if you're running a different distribution, even Ubuntu, uh, which is based on Debian, it uses slight, it includes, I believe, the package version in the name. So it'd be like Clang or Clang, whatever you want to call it, dash 10, I think, something like that. So I copy this. This is going to get all the like build tools that we're going to need for this. I'm going to paste that in and run it. And it's asking for my root password. I'm punching that in. So I'm using the su-c method instead of sudo because a lot of these systems, if you do a bare bones install, they're not going to have sudo and then even if they do, you've got to add your user to like the sudo or the wheel group and all this and that. So 
what I do is I do the SU-C inside of double quotes. And so if you're cool enough to have sudo figured out on your machine, then go ahead and just replace the SU-C quote with just sudo and, of course, no end quote. And you'll be able to run the commands without having to type your password every single time and stuff like that. But, of course, I did it, like I said, for the lowest common denominator. All right, so I guess I don't already have all of these packages installed on this one. So what I'm going to do is as soon as it kicks in, I'm going to hit pause on my end. And then as soon as it finishes downloading and unpacking and installing these packages, I'm going to hit unpause. So it's just go by in a split second on your end. And you can do the same thing as just pause this video and uh, unpause it once your, your packages are installed. Okay, so it's done setting up all of those packages, which was that command line right there. And now what I can do is I can run this command and this will, um, it will clean up since those packages are installed. It likely left a bunch of remnants of like the downloaded package files on the drive. So I can do a DF minus H and I can see on this particular drive, I have, uh, 4.6 gigabytes used and 2.9 free. So if I run that command and then might free up to 4.4 or something. Let's see. 4.5. Okay, not that great. I tried to expand this drive. I'm thinking of what I did wrong because you probably want to have at least the uh, 16 gig virtual drive. I'm going to go ahead and just try it with only three gigs free. I have a little tiny Debian virtual machine with, uh, where is it here? If I show you the settings, it's really pretty modest settings. It's like, uh, what base memory one, one and a half, um, gigs and then single core. So if you're running a really lightweight desktop, like this one's LXDE with, you know, no, not too many bells and whistles or anything, then you should be able to get by fine. I think you need less than a gigabyte to compile. If you're compiling purely at the command line without being in the X windowing environment, then uh, you might be able to slide by with just 512 megs, a half a gigabyte of memory. But anyway, okay, so what's next on the list? We ran the app get clean, freed up 100 megs or so. And we're skipping the arch part. You will, of course, want to do that. This second line right here does the same thing on there. It cleans up the packages after they're installed. And then, so we want to make our folders. So this command's going to make everything. It's going to make this tilde means uh, our home folder. So mine would be slash home slash veganase. And uh, it's going to build a source directory. And then under that, it's going to build an ASE which is just a short form for, because this was originally Allegro Sprite Editor. And then I guess somebody decided that, the, like, the word Ace and Sprite, um, I guess, they changed it to maybe that. And then it's also going to put a build directory under there. So we're going to extract the source code in the ASE for the Sprite Editor, and then we're going to build it in this empty build directory. And then while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and make a depths folder with the Skia libraries, which is the 2D uh, UI libraries that it uses. Okay, make sure I copy that. Jump back over here. Control Shift V for me. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Shouldn't matter specifically what folder I was in because that tilde will make it go back to the home folder. So those should be there. So if we go to CD source and do an LS, we could see it made all those folders. They're all empty though. That just has the, the little folder structure. Okay, so now we need to download and unpack the actual A Sprite source. So we're gonna CD into the A Sprite directory, the one we just made. And then we're going to use handy dandy C URL. Since it's included on most systems, um, you could also use wget or just a regular web browser if you want to go download this. But I'm just doing lowest common denominator like I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that. 
Oh, C your old command, not found. I wonder if wget is on Debian. Wget's not either. Okay, so what I'll need to do a little, I'm going to have to update that just for Debian. So what we'll do is we'll say su minus c apt get, oops, install c url. And then I'll jump over here real quick, edit this gist, and I'll add C URL to this top prerequisite thing. I'll just add it on the tail right there. C URL. So if you're watching this now and you copy and paste that, then that should give you C URL. Let me make sure that's the exact right name. Yep, okay. Now update the gist. So you should be good to go. So I'm going to recopy this, jump back over here. It should be installed now. And if I want, I can see URLs or curl or whatever it's called isn't too big. So this isn't as big of a deal, but I'll go ahead and run it anyway, just to free up a few bytes. Okay, and then I'm going to paste this one, this new command line in. Try one more time. There we go. So now it's downloading the source. It looks like it's 59.1 megabytes total. I'm getting it at close to 2.5 megabytes a second. And it's saying I should have it in 10 seconds. So I'll just go ahead and leave the video rolling and get ready for the next line, which is to unzip it. You can triple click to get the whole line. So we're in the source ASE folder right there. And we're going to unzip it into that same folder. These zip files a lot of times won't have a subdirectory automatically. So you'll want to be sure and be in the folder, which is what I did according to these directions. So we're unzipping that into ASE instead of being one directory below, expecting it to create some A sprite directory, which it doesn't do. Okay, so then as soon as that's done, we're going to CD over to that Skia folder we created. And then we're going to what? Okay, so we have two choices. Wherever you see this OR thing, anything that's like close to that, um, adjacent to that is going to be your options. So what we have over here is we have lib C++ or we have lib standard STD C++. And uh, roughly speaking, this lib C++ is for that Clang C Lang compiler thing. And lib standard C++ is for GCC. As far as I know, they both can work with the other one. I'm pretty sure I tried it every possible combination of a way and it worked, but I might not have done GCC against plain libcc or libc++. I don't know. I don't remember. Your mileage could vary, but I tried, if I didn't try that combination, I tried every other combination and it works despite what some of the A-Sprite documentation says. So what I would recommend probably is lib standard C++. But go ahead and do whatever you want. So that's the one I'm going to get. Triple click this, copy. And the reason I'm going to choose this one personally is because it allowed most desktop Linux distributions, all the ones I'm aware of, use GCC and the lib standard C++. Like that's what their stuff's going to be compiled and linked against. So if I use that compiler and those libraries, then what I can do is I can skip out on a few. Okay, now we got to do the unzip thing on this too. This whole command, you should be able to copy and paste. Otherwise, if you're typing it, what I did is this is that one that's just lib, oop, come on, just lib C++ right here. And this one's lib C++ standard. So you can just unzip, you can just grab the side of the or marker that you want. But otherwise, what it will do is it will try and unzip this one and like in my case, I didn't download it, so it's just going to automatically go to this other one. It's kind of a universal catch-all thing. All right. 
And that's off to the races. Yeah, so what that will do is that will allow me to save a little bit by... So here's the main build instructions we're going to be copying and pasting in. It will allow me to save a little bit way down here. So I finally get to this. Is uh, I can do shared libraries. And so shared libraries will use or at least attempt to use some of the existing popular libraries that are already in a lot of desktop Linux systems. And that way it's not redundantly like compiling stuff that I already have in my virtual machine and whatever, which is fine. Like you can do that, just like skip this whole shared library part. I'd actually probably recommend it the first time around um, and just go full basic static compile, just skip the shared library steps that I'm gonna cover. And that will give you a little bit bigger of a compilation and stuff, but there's a time space trade off to where as it's statically compiled, then in theory, it will take more, a little more memory, but it should run a little faster. And it also should be able to transfer. Like if you have another Linux, like a laptop instead of a desktop, and you want to just use that same compile, it's more likely to probably work. Okay. So that inflated all of that stuff, which was right there. So now we're right here. We need to triple click, come over here and change directories to that folder. Okay, now we're in the source ASE build folder, which is blank, but right below it, it has all the A sprite source code. And then, so if you are using that Clang compiler, then you'd want to copy and paste this in. This will adjust because most of the Linux systems or even a lot of Unix-like systems, I want to say, uh, maybe except for Mac, I don't know, will uh, they'll be set for GCC by default. So you'll want to switch to Clang. And then if you are using the Clang, you'll want to copy in that right there. And if you notice what I did is this one has the lib C, not the lib standard. So I shouldn't say if you're using Clang. Um, if you're using the lib C instead of the lib standard, regardless of what your uh, which compiler you're using. And then since I'm using lib standard, I'm going to do this chunk instead. Grab the double dot and everything. That double dot refers to the directory right above where we're at. I'm going to copy all that. Come over here. Just like we have been doing. Double check it. Lib standard C++. That's what I want. All right. And this is just going to run for a minute or maybe up to three minutes. I don't know. So I will pause this and be right back with that. Oh, wait. What does it say? Errors. Okay, that's right. I didn't test this one. What's it complaining about up here? C compiler detecting that. That's all. Okay, C make error, modules, message. The C compiler is not able to compile a simple test program. It fails with this. Hmm. I've never had that problem, and I've done this. Okay, libs, did you mean static libs C++? Weird. I have compiled this with Debian before it and never said this. Hmm. Did I mean that? Did you mean static? Lib standard C++. Okay, sure. That's so bizarre, it's hitting me with that now. So I'm just going to go here for both of those flags, and I'm going to make it say... Um, like, what they say now? Just a single dash static? I'm tripping out. Okay, let's see what happens. Do I, where do I do this at? Right here, dash static. Uh, 
I have a feeling this isn't going to work either. And when that doesn't work, I'll come up here and I'll try it another way. If I hold control, it should really super fast. Okay. Now I'm just going to get rid of this whole flag and just leave this static thing there. What a trip. Now it looks like it's actually working. Okay. I guess I meant static libc. Okay, now I'm really going to pause it. Go ahead and pause the video on your end, and then once we're caught up, we'll unpause. All right. So that step's now finished, that C make step. And we'll jump back over. And I did the second one. And so the shared library thing, uh, I don't know, in uh, in my basic install of Arch, I had to install TinyXML and CMark. So I haven't done this uh, shared library version with Debian yet. So technically, you could just skip past all this and just run Ninja A Sprite right now. And that should work from the same directory, from that build directory. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to uh, edit this build, this cmakecache.txt. So I'll just do a nano minus w. Um, see, it's case sensitive in Linux. I'm going to edit that. And then I'm going to do a control w in a, if you use like leaf pad or some graphical user interface program, you could probably do like a control F to find. And then, so I'm going to search for capital use underscore shared underscore, just like that. So then we get all the way over here, C mark. I'm just going to change these to on in all caps. And it's going to try and use my built-in libraries of these names instead of custom compiling them all over again itself sort of redundantly. And... Like I said, you might want to just skip this part and see if you can just get it to compile without this part because you could run into errors on your system if you don't have the not only the libraries but the uh, the dash dev version of them on some of the platforms. Okay, so Zlib should be the last one. I'm going to do a control X, yes, to save the buf buffer and enter to save over the same file name or otherwise in the graphical stuff, it's pretty self-explanatory and jump back over to the instructions okay so now i'm going to go ahead and just try to ninja a sprite and i suspect i'll get an error or two and i'll have to download those packages probably the same ones we'll see so paste that in the build directory hitting enter okay it failed which we expected so what's it saying here it looks like fine package what I'm not seeing which no package harf buzz found. We need greater than or equal to 97. Okay. So we'll do, I'll do a, what is it? An apt, oops, still have caps lock on. Apt cache search for, what is it called? Harf buzz? Do a shift page up there. Yeah, harf buzz. So I can do that cache search as any user. Should pop up some stuff. All right. What do we have here? Do we have just a regular old harf buzz? What a weird name. Um, if it's too complex, I'll just skip it. But so there's dev and there's bin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just install the dash dev. So I'll do su minus c and uh, did I copy that? Yeah. Harfuzz dash dev. And that should bring in the binaries of dependency. Let's see. Right, the following additional will be installed. 
Well, it's bringing in lib harf buzz, which is definitely the minimum that it needs. Okay, yeah, let's just roll with that. 73 megabytes of additional space. 17 and a half megabytes of archive. So that 17 and a half megabytes, I'll run, want to run app get clean to get rid of that if I care about that. All right, if this finishes up pretty quick, I'll just let it roll. Otherwise, I'll pause it again. All right, I'm going to pause it real quick. Okay, just to really free up some space, I'm going to pop open my little file manager here. And I'm going to go into that source folder. And I'm going to delete this, this A sprite zip file because that's almost 60 megabytes. Um, delete that. Yes, I need to make sure really quick that it's not saving that. Good, it's not saving it in the trash can. And then also I want to go back up a folder and go into this depths, Skia, and delete this uh, zip file as well, which is taking up 30 megabytes. So I'll hit delete key. Yes, delete that. All right, that'll free me up a little bit of space. And then I'll do an app get clean right here. Okay, let's see what the space is looking like. 2.6 gigs available. There's a chance. Okay, so that was that harf buzz thing. Now I'm going to go back up to that ninja command, and I'm going to try it again and see if it complains again. Okay, it's complaining again. What's it complaining about now if we scroll back here? Uh, the package name PK does not match the name of the calling package harf buzz. This can lead to problems. Is that really it? Rerunning C make could not find C cache is okay. That's a warning. Okay, so maybe there's some other harf buzz thing. Like I said, you could totally skip this step. Found it says it found it. Found harf buzz two point C make error finding standard or could not find GIF. Most recent call. Okay, that's an easy fix. That's what we want. Since it says it's finding harf buzz, we don't want to be fooled by that. We want to come down to this real error. Okay, so what we can do now, same exact process. Just I'm gonna do an app cache search. Um, for GIF, and I'm going to pipe that to GRIF, because sometimes I think this search, it will go into the package descriptions as well, or maybe dependencies, so by going to GRIF, it's saying, hey, it's got to say GIF right on that, that main line. So there's lib GIF. Um, that's probably what we want, lib GIF dev, I believe. So let's do... If it doesn't have too many dependencies, it should just fly right in. It's just itself, so it doesn't even ask me to confirm. Lib gif dev. I should have the binary, I'm assuming, already. All right, let's run the ninja command. And this time, JPEG. Okay, so that should be the same thing. Search for JPEG. I'll have this all patched up in that file too. I should be editing that as we speak so that I don't forget to do that. Edit. So we need C URL. We need a, uh, what was it? Harf buzz dash dev um, lib gif dash dev. And what are we doing over here? Let me double check those. So it was lib gif lib harf buzz dot dev get that right so nobody has any problems with that and then if i come all the way back down what do we have here do we have lib lib jpeg is that just what it's called lib jpeg dev all right 
bib jpeg dash dev Oop. and then we'll do a So it's kind of trial and error. That's a lot like how I came up with this whole setup for how to do this. I just tried a bunch of stuff and when it yelled at me, I saw if I could fix the problem. Just go back and find that exact, you know, for the most part, ignore the warnings and then just look for that actual error. Run that ninja again. We're getting closer. So what does it need now? Find C or C make. Um, could not find C URL. Now that's really weird because we just installed that. Maybe there's like a lib C URL. Okay. And that reminds me too, while I'm thinking of it, these not everybody's going to need. So I'm not going to put them there. I'm going to put them down in this section right here. Okay, and then let's see what this libc URL thing is. So that app cache, search for C URL, and we'll grip. Okay, there's a uh, Lewis C URL, let's see. Uh oh, there's a lot of them, oh yeah. Does it have a specific version number that it wanted? JPEG not finding C URL. I don't see anything about a specific version. So it looks like we have the choice between three and four. So with Debian, it tends to be slightly older packages. So if you go for the slightly newer ones, then you're probably okay. If you're using like Ubuntu, Ubuntu or something else that's really more of a cutting edge type of thing, I would probably start by falling back a version number first. Okay, so lib. Which one would it be? NSS? Oh, wow. Too many choices. Um... I wonder, I could look in their folder. Okay, I'm just gonna go with this. The one that's striking me the most likely is this one. libcurl4 OpenSSL dev. Hmm. What's this? Oh, that's Lua. Okay, all right, let's just try it. Uh, and if this doesn't work, we'll try something else. What's it bringing in? Okay, back to that ninja command. Hey, it looks like it's getting further. Whoa, what's going on? Tiny XML include directory not found. Is that what it's crying about? I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, let me go ahead and copy that C URL thing because it looks like it was probably the right one. So I'm gonna copy that, go back over here to our editing file, space and paste that sucker. And then we're probably going to need tiny XML. So let's try that out. AppCast search, tiny XML. And there it is, tiny XML dev. Okay. I'm going to jump over here and add that. All right, Ninja. Sorry it's taking so long, but at least you have all the goods if you need it. Okay, so this Pixman thing. 
whatever that is looks like it's the problem it's yelling a lot about that so we'll go app cache search pixman and here we got a pixman dev So we'll replace this with it and jump over here and add it. It's almost not worth the hassle on the Debian to do this. So like I said, on Arch, it was just after a basic, I have an LXDE X11 environment with like Chromium and Firefox installed, which I think I have mostly the same packages, probably less even installed on Arch. So those were the only two dependencies and having to pull in a, quite a few for Debian. Okay, Ninja. Looks like it said it couldn't find something. CMARC libraries. Not surprised. So, and this might be the last one. CMARC. So we have libcmarkdev. Looks like a good choice. It's been working so far. All right. So did I get all of these? I don't know. I apologize if I missed one. But that should be all the extra needed development libraries so if you get an error just scroll back like I did and look what it was and consider letting me know so I can fix it up back to ninja again try it out Ooh, yeah once you get to this where it says like so many of 1166 or that number could vary depending on uh, how much stuff it needs it thinks it needs to build that's a good sign it doesn't mean that it's definitely going to compile all the way through but that means that's it's running the marathon now our that initial junk we had to do is all over now there is a i've had it crash halfway through on this before but same thing same process as before we'll just look at the error message if that happens and pick it up from there otherwise if it gets all the way done we'll have a working a sprite so i'm going to pause it and if you made it this far or yours might already be compiling you might have said forget it and skip that last step so just go ahead and pause the video with me and we'll pick it up after we're done compiling thanks hey i just wanted to pop in and show you one thing i'm just about done down here you can see 959 out of 1166 of course, yours will have more if you did the full static compile without doing all that weird little shared library stuff I did. So that's saving me probably like plus or minus 300 build steps. You can also go to System Tools Task Manager and that will pop this thing up a lot like the Windows Task Manager and you can just uh, maximize it or whatever you want to do. But I just wanted to illustrate that uh, as you can see right now it's only using about 385 megabytes of RAM. Um, I've seen it hit like 760 something or whatever. I've never seen it cross 800. So, and then the ver the uh, windowing system itself is using like 200 and two to 300 megabytes for its bare bones thing. Um, so yeah, and then right here we have there's two instances of the C++ compiler running and they're both kind of roughly split in the CPU. So even when I did run it on a dual core virtual machine, I was still seeing about the same memory usage because it's still trying to run two tasks. But I was going to say, you know, if you did if you're setting up a fresh virtual machine or, you know, you haven't quite hit this step yet, you might save some time if you uh you know, shut down your virtual machine or before you fire it up, go in and go ahead and bump it up to two cores. Um, but yeah, it as far as but uh, as far as memory goes, you're not going to see a big advantage by increasing the memory, I don't think. I left my memory at about a gig and a half because when I add it all up on my system, on my host system out here, you can see 
with OBS recording. I have a 1500 megabyte, 1 1.5 gigabyte buffer on that. So my memory, I guess I'm still just, I could probably get away with using, you know, like a two gig virtual machine probably if I wanted to. But like I said, I'm not going to see any increased performance right here. The CPU, um, I guess the, the uh, OBS is using, I have a quad core. So 50% would be two of my cores. And uh, so I guess OBS is probably using a core because if I pause the video, then it will go down to around 30% or whatever. So I just wanted to show those stats. We can see the virtual box right there. Yeah, but inside Linux, you can go ahead and open this. There it is, 782 megabytes, 803 megabytes. That's the most I've ever seen it used. So that's about it peeking out. And of course it keeps the CPU. It does a pretty good job of keeping that pretty much pegged right there. But anyway, I'm gonna pause it one last time. And usually once it gets this far, it's most likely gonna finish compiling. So. We'll see. All right, finally, linking CXX executable bin a sprite. 1166 of 1166, yours probably has more. And so if I do an LS to list the directory, we could see there's this bin folder here and that's where the goods are at. So if we go into the CD bin, take a peek, there's a sprite. So I'm gonna do a dot slash a sprite and then hit tab and hit enter the moment of truth and in just a second it's running a little slower on my machine probably because it's clearing out all the stuff to do with the compile and its caches it did get up to just over a gigabyte at the very tail end when it was linking everything and all that and uh, that pretty much wiped out most of the system caches because I only have one and a half gigs on here so yeah, that's probably why the delayed starts. So yeah, we could go in here, help about uh, a sprite 1.2.39. It says dash dev, but you know, it's as far as I know, it's the release version. Just basically means it's compiled from source, I guess. And uh, just to show, we can go new file. We'll just leave the defaults. And I'm zoom in a little bit here. And I'll grab a color and give it some little squiggly on the pad and then I'm going to file save this and I'll save it on the desktop as Sprite 001 whatever default format and then I'm going to close everything click all the X's file exit and we know the true test if we hit up and rerun the same command and of course it's there the trial version wouldn't even let us get this far as saving it and there it is it's saved so that just goes to show without any special fiddling around or anything we didn't like change any compile flags to change it from a demo version or anything shady like this this is exactly how they provide the source code like i said that doesn't seem like they have any documents or comments hindering uh for people to custom compile it for their own self once again you're not supposed to distribute this compiled version and like always, I'd encourage you to support this project as well as maybe even any other projects that are open source that you like because these people are obviously working hard on it because uh, the completely free projects aren't quite able to catch up and keep up with this one. So I'm just going to close it off by showing you a couple last little things in here. So we had just ran this Ninja A Sprite command. That's where we're at. So. Right here is the option for if you want to install it just for your user, basically, but you want to get it out of that source folder. So this is going to move that bin to an A Sprite folder in your home tree under the name op, opt for like optional, I guess. Um, and what this is doing is it's kind of mimicking the source tree on the regular system. So if basically programs that install more like they're on windows where like most of the programs in one folder versus a, a real unix style install linux style install whatever you want to call it what it does is in linux it will break the program up like if you get an official package of something usually through like your repo your uh, distro maintainer what they're going to do is they're going to pit the uh did i have this open? okay 
they're going to break it up so that like the, the exe file, so to speak, the one you double click is going to be in like your user bin folder. And then like your icons and stuff are going to be in like user share. So your programs basically split up a bunch of standardized locations. But anyway, you could probably do that with this one if you really wanted to. I would recommend the user local tree to do all that kind of stuff if you want to get crazy with it. But like I said, we can just uh, take this bin folder. Well, let me back up one. So it's uh, I'm in the build, the plain build directory right now, and there's that bin folder. Let's jump over here. I might need to tune up these options. So I should do a cd dot dot because right here we we're in the build folder. Okay, so I'm going to copy this one, paste it in there, and this should move it to that folder cannot move there because there's no such okay cool i'll update this file real quick while we're at it all right we'll go to edit scroll back down to there towards the end and right before desktop shortcut so we're right here what i meant to do was uh i'll just do a cd slash source ASC just to make sure we're totally oh yeah build yeah build okay wait we were in the build folder I think I moved it I moved into the bin folder so we should still be in the build folder right there and then we want to make dir and it's going to be the opt folder just like that I believe so I'm going to run this command and see if this works. And so, yeah, and then that part worked at least. Now let's see if this one wants to work. Should. All right. So now if I look, that bin folder has gone from right there. But if we go to our regular home, I'm just going to hit CD enter. That takes us to our regular home folder. Now, if I do an LS, we can see there's this opt folder. There's the source that all that stuff happened in. Here's the opt folder. I'm going to go into there and I'm going to do an LS and there's a sprite. And I'll also do an LS of the regular with the preceding forward slash right there. So this is an absolute path, right? This opt folder, you can see VirtualBox installed its guest editions there. But um, the one in our home folder is different. It's not, it doesn't start with a slash. It basically starts with a tilde, I guess you could say. Okay, so now from here, if I go ASC, let me do that LS again, clear it out. Do the LS so you can see. So then if we go into CD, ASC, PR, ITE, and then do a dot slash, or you could run it from anywhere, as long as you give it some sort of path in front of it so it knows explicitly that that's what you're going for. And hit enter from here. See, yep, it's still running. It still remembers where this was at. So this is basically going from the home folder. There's a dot config folder in the home folder. You can go in here with the uh, PC file man. And I have it set in edit, preferences. What is it? So I, I always get ready to move to the trash can, usually in the virtual machines. And then always show full file names I usually do that okay the one that I wanted to show you I think is just right here like show hidden files okay so we can see this config and then if we go in there it's under a sprite and so there's all the settings and stuff so that's how it's remembering these settings right now um, let me show you one more final thing so say you do want to install it system-wide for everybody this is the trick. So I believe I have those commands. So that's what this other option is over here. This one right here will just run it out of your home folder from anywhere. So this other chunk of commands right here, this is if you want to install it for everybody. So one thing you want to do is make sure this command right here is going to make sure that your username, you replace username with your current username on the system. So mine would be veganase. Uh, you want to make sure you're part of the games group which actually this one is set up for Arch Linux. 
So what I need to do is I need to go into Debian and find out a good group. What if I do groups right now on me? This will tell me who, who I'm a part of. So I'm part of CD-ROM, floppy, sudo, audio, dip, video, plug, dev, blah, 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 blah. scanner maybe? Like what we want to do is make it part of a group that's easily accessible so that like most people could be in it if they wanted to be. And uh, I forget how to list all the groups that might be available. Um, so for now, for at least demonstration purposes, I'll show how to add it to the scanner group. So what we do is since we paste this in and change this to scanner, and then put your real username there, and that will add you to that scanner group. You're running it as root. And then right here, this one will actually... We go paste. So it's going to CH root. It's going to um, change the ownership recursively to root. And then we want to change this one to scanner. Let's see. A, a similar kind of a deal, right? Whoever can access the scanner can access a pixel editor, I guess. And yeah, so that would be CHO minus R. Da, 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 da. And then I could just to be explicit be like a sprite. Okay, now if I do an ls minus alh, we can see that it it's owned by the user scanner or the user root this directory. So the user has the read, write, and execute permissions, but the uh, the other people, which is scanner, they get um. They only get read and execute. And the same thing, this means the rest of the world. Read and execute. Okay, so let's go into CD, ASC, and let's do an LS minus LH here. Okay, so, hmm, let me see in the data. CD data. Okay, this is what I wanted to check, that the people in the group have this right here, this middle setting. They also have read-write access to, like, these XML files. So anybody part of scanner could have that. Anyway, I don't know if this is necessarily the best way to do this, but it's just kind of a way. So I'm going to back up. And now this A sprite thing, if we go back over here, so it was called bin. So that's why I had the or thing. So now we really just want to move it to opt effectively. So none of the other stuff. We don't have to do the minus T because we're not renaming it while we move the folder or anything. So we can literally just do like this and uh, we want to we want to move the a sprite to forward slash op forward slash so we're still in the opt with the tilde in front of it we're still in our user folder opt right so now if I go well I can just run it out like it's going to be right next to virtual box so if I do the forward slash the very top of the tree one there it is a sprite so now we can do uh forward slash opt forward slash a sprite and you can do tab completion too just hit a letter or three and then hit tab and it should run from here too all right and i think no matter what even if you don't mess with those groups it probably will run it just will continue saving to your home folder and i can show you that real quick too is uh Go back into that file manager, go to config, a sprite, and then I'm just going to delete this. The whole little inside the dot config folder, I just deleted that a sprite folder. So now if we launch it again, it should be like a fresh start. And there you can see there's no recent files or anything. But if I go to file, let's have recent. Nope. Just go to open, go to that desktop. There's that a sprite file. There it is. All right. There you have it. A sprite compiled from source. Thanks a lot for watching.